I am going I am going to uh, share uh, a little slide deck um, and it, it's not a, at all a um, a tactic um, to waste time, but to give you an overview of some of the things that are happening uh, within the next couple months with the Charter for Compassion. And um, we have a lot going on. And I want, first of all, uh, and you'll be seeing this in uh, our newsletter, our upcoming newsletter, but this is an opportunity for all charter members uh, to become involved in a program called Crossing Borders. And what we are looking for are eventually to have 200 trainers in Crossing Borders, which is a unique opportunity to engage young people uh, as well as seasoned people in the art of conversation. Uh, and we're starting four different programs uh, on May 16th, 17th, and 18th. So we want you to be aware of that. And a good source for always finding out what's going on uh, with the charter uh, is to look at our newsletter that comes out weekly. And then certainly also uh, to look at um, you know, some of the additional materials that you get in emails. The other thing that's coming up um, on May 6th to the 14th is celebrating life. And actually there are three cameo performances, one by Ron, the mayor of San Antonio himself, and who you'll be hearing from and myself, along with other people that you might know, like David Suzuki, for example, down here in the lower uh, right-hand corner, who is really one of those climate ambassadors and has been for years. Um, we also want to alert you uh, to something that's coming up. It's the first time we're doing this. We have had a global read for four years, uh, but this time, this year, we are going to start a children's global read. And our very first one is We Are All Flowers. And the book is by Orla O'Sullivan. And Orla is an extraordinary facilitator. She's the education director of Plum Village, Thich Nhat Hanh's uh, uh, retreat area. And so we're so excited to, to have her be our first author. Uh, this is a great opportunity to bring kids, uh, grandparents, bring their grandchildren, uh, and just spend uh, an hour meeting uh, Orla and um, and we can have a great party. We have a number of other books for the year. Uh, one that's coming up in July is an extraordinary book, Living Well with a Serious Illness, uh, Robin Bennett Kanarak. And Robin's uh, at Tufts University. Um, she has written this book primarily starting out because of a long illness that her son uh, had. And she um, will be present with us in July. And then um, here's something that happens the last Saturday of every month with Orla. And it's our own compassion circle, uh, an opportunity for people to come together uh, and to reflect on just different topics. Uh, it's a time for meditation. It's a time for great poetry and sharing. And it truly is an international national gathering of people. Uh, and so we're thrilled uh, it has taken off. And as I said, uh, last Saturday of every month. And then the Parliament of World Religions, um, just to keep it on your radar, uh, August 14th and 18th, uh, the Charter is a co-sponsor of the Parliament. We have 27 workshops that will be given there, uh, along with a lot of other activities, including uh, a banquet, uh, which will be, I think, the third or fourth time we've done uh, at the Parliament. And so we're excited about that and more excited also about the people uh, that will be given humanitarian awards. The last couple of years, we've done it online, um, but this time it will be in person. And I think it's okay that we say that one of the people receiving a humanitarian award is present today with us, but I'm not gonna give out the name. Uh, and so our very last big event that we're participating in uh, is Compassionate USA. 
And that is going to happen uh, because of somebody by the name of Ron Nienberg, uh, the mayor of San Antonio. And this is really a collaborative effort um, with not only uh, the mayors uh, from the United States, uh, Compassionate San Antonio, uh, and also uh, Alamo College, as well as the Charter for Compassion. So we're really thrilled uh, with what Ron is going to talk to you about today. And that is to really get your juices stirring. Uh, because the success of Compassionate USA is really up to every single person who is on this call today, all of the other people who signed up and will be getting a recording uh, so that they can get involved. And so we are thrilled uh, at the Charter for Compassion to be a part of this. And so Ron, um, I'm gonna turn this over to you now. Uh, and Ron will probably take a few questions uh, at the end when he's finished, but he's going to have to run off uh, to another meeting. He's in Washington DC right now, but he has a few people from uh, San Antonio who will pick up the mantle for him. Thank you for coming today, Ron. Thank you so much, Marilyn, and to the Charter for Compassion and to everyone joining uh, with me today in the US chat, my thanks. Uh, and I'm very excited for you to get to meet our the engine behind the work that we're doing in San Antonio, our Alamo Colleges team and Reverend Ann Helmke. What we're talking about today is no small thing. It's very exciting and it's fundamental. It's imminent and, and I would say foundational to each and all of us. Uh, to our children and our legacies, to our neighborhoods and communities, to our, our country and to our planet. What we're talking about today is not only history in the making, it's also extremely urgent. And I just want to give a little background and perspective. Uh, according to gun, the Gun Violence Archive, which we unfortunately have grown all too familiar with, uh, which started tracking gun violence in 2013 and document shootings in which at least four people are killed or injured, not including the shooter. More than 200 people have been killed in mass shootings in the United States so far this year. And documents um, also indicate that most mass shootings and mass shooting deaths at the same time this year uh, are at a higher point than they have ever been in a decade. And that's hard to fathom considering the last 10 years that we've lived through. Uh, we all know uh, the most recent tragedies, the birthday party in Dadeville, Alabama, uh, the bank uh, tragedy in Kentucky and Louisville, the dance hall in Monterey Park, California, uh, and almost a year ago now uh, at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. Uh, what I'm here to talk with you about today uh, began not just springing from that, but within a week of that tragedy in Uvalde, as the world and our communities are gripped almost in a state of paralysis, uh, we in our community, along with many others, uh, drew inspiration from the Charter of Compassion and the work that we have been sharing together in some way, shape, or form for a very long time. In fact, the gift that we're sharing with you today is dedicated to the families, the children, and the communities who are healing from school shootings and all forms of injustice across the United States. But let's be very clear. Uh, what I also want to emphasize is that this is about far more than mass shootings. And this is the kind of work that indicates that we have a more fundamental task at hand which is to draw a connection with one another. The kind of insanity that, improve, that, that creates the tragedies that we've lived through must stop. We're smarter than this, we can be better than this, and we have everything that we need to do to shift this tide because compassion, which is at the root and which is the antidote to our suffering, is literally in all of our DNA. It is what binds us together as human beings. We're all aware of the urgencies in our global context. This is the critical first step, awareness and being awake to it. Where do we go from there? Then what? How can we strengthen that within us to become better ourselves? How can we live into being the best of ourselves? And how can we shift this seeming tide uh, sy systematically? 
the, the polarization and the violence that we seem to be overtaken by? How do we shift that back? The good news, and I would say the great news, is that science is on our side. Neuroscience and the new science of compassion and our common humanity uh, establishes that this is what our obvious interdependence relies upon. The new science, though, is, is also ancient. It's found in all world religions, and it's commonly known as the golden rule, also known as the ethic of reciprocity. The bottom line here is that we, we are talking about is giving the, the globe a dose of compassion. Number one, having the necessary empathy. Two, knowing that we have the agency to transform that suffering through specific skills and competencies. And then finally, acting with those skills intentionally in our world together. As you may have seen in the Compassionate USA trailer, the gift that we're bringing all of you today from our city, San Antonio, is an initial and much needed dose of compassion. And it's called Compassionate USA. It's in keeping with the global growth of compassionate cities, compassionate states, compassionate countries that was courageously in initiated by the Charter for Compassion much more than a decade ago. Uh, I will tell you that one of my proudest moments as mayor was the very first day when intentionally I made the first document as I signed as mayor, the Charter for Compassion for San Antonio. You're gonna hear more details about what we're talking about with Compassionate USA and my fellow San Antonians who I'm anxious for you to get to meet are gonna join me on the chat and many of them are already on screen right now. You'll hear how you can partner with this effort. You'll also get a sneak peek into the content of the soon to be launched campaign and the mini course. Um, as you heard, I, I do have a hard stop, unfortunately for meetings here at the White House. Um, so you'll have to forgive me, I ask for your patience. Um, but my colleagues here from San Antonio are, are uh, ready and eager to talk about partnering uh, with you and, and the content details. And so I'll leave those details with them. Uh, for now, I want us to focus on where we are and in the time that we are. Compassionate USA needs you as a partner to, aff to affirm what we're doing, to endorse it, to say yes to compassion for every age and in every sector of our society. Compassion USA needs you as a partner to communicate and to promote these ideas and the programs to spread its potential by word of mouth and in every way possible that we communicate. Compassion USA needs you a partner to disseminate and to implement it in your own communities. You and we are the only way that compassion will spread. And so what I am uh, going to assert is that there is no path forward for our communities or for our globe than compassion. We've been doing what we have been doing and how we have been doing it for so long has gotten, to us, gotten us to where we are today. And obviously that has not worked so well, but we're here and we're here now. And with the neuroscience and with the ancient science uh, and, the, and the increasing recognition of compassion as the binding of all of us, if and when compassion is ever going to fully work as a strategy, I suggest that the only time left to do that is now, and so I greatly appreciate all of your attention and, and presence today. And I look forward to embarking on this work with all of you and um, looking forward to uh, some conversation and questions as time allows. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Great. So how much longer do you have, uh, Ron? I have until five uh, Eastern. Okay, great. So if there are any questions, please write them uh, in the chat. But um, if you raise your hand, we'll, we'll open the microphone for you, uh, or you can do that yourself and just uh, ask the question. I have to say, Ron, I saw an awful lot of smiles as you were uh, giving your, your presentation. Uh, so I'm, I'm guessing that people from San Antonio are extremely proud of what you've been able to deliver so far. 
Uh, I know there's an election coming up and we're not so political, but we certainly are endorsing Ron Nienberg for uh, mayor. Uh, we're excited about that. Uh, any questions? Shalini has her hand raised and, and then, yeah. yeah. And then uh, Steve, okay. Shalini, um, why don't you just open your mic and uh, ask your question? Sure. Greetings from Amherst, uh, Massachusetts. I'm a town councilor in Amherst. And um, I am very, very interested. I'm also personally a researcher in mindfulness, so really believe in this work. Uh, I would love to know what are some tangible ways that this uh, building a compassionate city, uh, what are the tangible ways in which that can have an impact on either education or um, we're experiencing um, you know, just anti-racism and how do you promote anti-racism or like what are some air policing, defund the police? Like there are all these different movements that are happening and it's creating fragments in our own community. So are there any practical ways that you have implemented change? Yeah, thank you very much, Shalini, for the question. And, and um, I'll also, uh, I, I know my colleagues in San Antonio will reflect a little bit on that as well, but just from a policymaker's perspective, Mm -hmm. I will tell you that uh, establishing compassion as the fundamental policymaking principle uh, in our administration has been uh, very tangible and has produced some significant results. I'll give you the first example of this. San Antonio, unfortunately, has been uh, ranked in you know, the top one, two or three in cities in terms of urban poverty and socioeconomic inequity for mm -hmm. generations. And so uh, understanding compassion as action, as, as not passive, but acting on others' suffering, uh, understanding suffering and doing what you can to alleviate it. Um, we've done that through policy in terms of these historic challenges. Uh, we, uh, one of the very first things that, that came out of this initially was San Antonio became one of the first big cities in the country to adopt an equity framework for all of our policymaking and resource allocation. Uh, in our first budget and subsequently over the last six that I've presided over, uh, we have really changed the way we, we allocate our resources and our, and our efforts towards addressing historical underinvestment and really building up pathways to education and economic, socioeconomic mobility. That's very intentional and I would tell you also requires a little, a little bit of political fortitude, especially in Texas, um, mm -hmm. to you know, really uh, get everyone on board with the fact that if we're going to address historic inequities, um, you know, again, uh, you know, compassion would have us understand that we, we put our efforts and our, our resources much in the same way you would allocate those within your own household to bring up the entire uh, to bring up the entire family. Uh, and it requires uh, that resources get shifted around. Uh, places that need it more will get more and so on and so forth. So uh, that's one element. And I would say one of the most powerful things that we've done with through the Charter of Compassion, in my perspective, and I'm sure there's others, is that we have simply documented acts of compassion in our community. You know, the, the idea that compassion exists in each and every one of us recognizing that and calling attention to that is really powerful um, because this is not foreign to anyone. You just have to tap into it, celebrate it and practice it. Great, thank you. And Steve, I think you had your hand up next. Okay, um, hello, Ron, I'm Steve and I hail Hi, from Steve. Seattle, Washington. And I'm wondering if you've had any contact from Mayor Bruce Harrell in terms of your initiative and if he's shown any interest. Um, I've been thinking of emailing him, um, but I have no idea, you know, if there's a better way to contact him or if he's been responsive to your initiative. I actually, I haven't spoken with him yet on the initiative, um, although I did speak with him when we were at the U.S. Conference of Mayors before we were ready to, to create partnerships, but uh, Bruce and I have been calling and texting over the last few weeks for different reasons, um, but I, I would be very happy to reach out and, and to um, bring him on board. Uh, you know, incidentally, I saw Bruce in Austin 
at a small conference called the Civic IO that's a little branch off of the US Conference of Mayors. Uh, my inspiration in, in this work was really uh, what I talked about before and also the idea that there is collective trauma in our communities that has been unaddressed and unacknowledged really as a result of uh, history, but also made acutely um, an issue through these last few years. Uh, Bruce was at the, the one that we did this year, the one last year with the U.S. Surgeon, and Ge Surgeon General was really a, an eye opener for me. So I know Bruce is in the same uh, thought pattern as I am on these issues, and I'd, I'd love to reach out to him. Great. Yeah. Great. And for people who don't know, Seattle was the first um, compassionate city. And I know I saw a hand, but disappeared from my screen, and it said Zoom user. And so um, I don't know. There you are. It may be me. Mm -hmm. I'm using my phone, and I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, Mayor, uh, thank you for all you do. Thank you for this. Um, I'll just read what I wrote real quick. Compassionate. To, um, in the past two years, I have signed the Charter for Compassion, become a Compassionate Institute Fellow, um, and become very involved with Compassionate San Antonio. However, on a personal side, and from my personal experiences in San Antonio since I moved here two years ago, A, I have experienced horrible, horrible experience is trying to get adequate um, help with my mental health. Um, it, it, it's just beyond me how, how bad it's been. I have also experienced a biased and corrupt judge in small claims court, and I was trying to fight for my tenants' rights and was harassed and mentally abused by a landlord. And when I fought for those rights, I just learned that even though I was a paying tenant, that if you live in an apartment or a triplex, you have no rights. You're not a human being. You can just deal with the asbestos, deal with the, with the landlord who's abusing you. So these are just basic fundamental things. So if we're going to be a compassionate city, how do we, how do we fix these issues? No, thank you very much for that. And I'm very sorry to hear about uh, your challenges in San Antonio with regard to housing. They're not, uh, they're not recent. Uh, and I do uh, know that they, are, they exist virtually in every community. I'll tell you that the first effort in terms of policy, specific policy that we embarked on with regard to equity was housing, developing a comprehensive and compassionate housing policy for the city of San Antonio. It's taken me the better part of 10 years to uh, get a, a policy established um, to go after the bad actors within the rental community, landlords who don't take care of their tenants and provide for the dignity and safety of the people who live there. Uh, but just recently in the last uh, two months, city council adopted policy to actually start doing that. Uh, not only reaffirming the renter's bill of rights that we have established uh, through resolution, but also giving us some policy teeth you know, some, some accountability measures that we can hold folks uh, to standards because, you know, in our view, and again, uh, in accordance to the comprehensive plan that we adopted with community, everybody in our city deserves a place to live with safety and in dignity. And so uh, we have to be able to have tools to address those um, that aren't living up to their standards and we're doing that now. Uh, so I'm happy to get some information from you offline uh, to follow up with your particular issues, if that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. I just think there's a, a, a bucket of people that aren't addressed in, in, in all of that, the people that live you in can send, under four units. If you can send uh, your information through the chat, and I'll get that down through our staff here, uh, and we'll follow up with you. Thank right. you. we got to do something about corrupt judges. Absolutely awful. Okay, you know, thank you, Ron. Um, I'm in all of these meetings that that we have, uh, not only in the United States, but around the world. Um, we know uh, how much work we have in front of us. Um, there's a wonderful Irish um, sociologist and someone that we're going to have later this year as part of our global read. Uh, his name is Cormac Russell. 
And Cormac has written this wonderful book on uh, connectivity, very similar to what Vivek uh, Murthy has written about in, in loneliness as well. But he talks about the need for us to look to all sides of our neighborhood and to make certain that we are aware of people who are five doors from our own door. Uh, and that that's one of the beginning ways of, uh, of taking care of, of compassionate issues, uh, you know, locally. Uh, I know you have to run, uh, you have uh, maybe one minute and I know that I see a hand going up and maybe uh, a minute. Uh, There's also a question in chat. There's a lot of things in chat. We will make certain that we uh, download the chat and uh, get all of this information to both uh, the mayor and to the staff that are here. I, I'm sorry, I don't have any, I think, it, is it uh, Ron? Yeah, it's Ron. I have a problem with my um, raising the hand here. Just a quick question. I'm kind of new to the group. I was invited on just to participate. And one of the things that I just wanted to see if this is something the group would take up, there's a bill that went back before the House of Representatives in the United States by Marcy Captur of Ohio, uh, which is basically a reinstatement of a, a reinitiation of a, a prudent banking act. It's basically referred to as the Glass-Steagall Act, which would want to get, once again, like Roosevelt did, separate the two types of banking, the commercial banks from these casino uh, operations that are going on, reinstating that particular Glass-Steagall law would actually then put the control of credit back in the um, in the nation's hand and direct credit into rebuilding um, you know, infrastructure, all types of infrastructure. And that bill just went in last week. It's a, it was there 13 years ago, 10 years ago. It's House Bill uh, 2714, I think. And maybe the mayor is, is familiar with that, but this would actually do wonders of actually shifting it from this casino economy to back one like Lincoln did with the greenback policy or Roosevelt did in the uh, in the war years. So uh, I don't know if you were familiar with that. I just thought I'd throw it out as a suge suggestion that the cities could take up not only nationally, but internationally. Thank you, uh, Ron. I don't know if you wanna uh, just speak to that and then you must go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Uh, I, I'll admit I'm not uh, too familiar with that piece of legislation, so I'd, I'd love to get some more information uh, okay. before before speaking out too much about that. Um, and let me just say in closing, as I as I do have to get off, uh, this is not um, this is again, this work is not foreign. These concepts are part of our DNA. But I will say the work is not easy also. And just about every aspect of suffering in our community, we just heard some today, uh, needs focused attention and it needs commitment. You know, I mentioned um, just a minute ago that on one single policy, it took almost a decade to pass. If we're gonna turn the tide on what we're facing today, it's going to require successive commitments to people who are not even in this room. And on the part of people who we elect to office, whether that's in, judge's office, mayor's office, or anything else uh, that are continuing to be committed to these concepts and leading with compassion. Um, and if we can be uh, a group to help disseminate that information, let people know how simple it is to pick it up, uh, but how difficult it is to remain committed to it, then I think our work is, is well worth it. And I do want to say to anybody out there who is listening, who does have challenges, the most important thing that we can do is to make sure that people are not alone, that we hear them, we understand them, and we will work together to ease their, their troubles. So um, thank you all very much for having me, Marilyn. Uh, you continue uh, to inspire me and everyone else in San Antonio and to Dr. Helmke, um, you as well, my mentor and compassion. I appreciate that. And I leave you in her capable hands. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much, Ron. And to the other Ron, if you could write that bill, and put it in the chat so that others can grab hold of it and do some re reflection research on it, that would be great. So Anne, turning it over to you. So Marilyn, thanks. Um, that was really good. And I'm so glad that we're recording this. We need to link to that somehow with Compassionate USA. 
But I do know at the end of the mayor's comments, he called us to action in terms of partnering with Compassionate USA. So my role today is to tell you how to do that and, and what that looks like. Um, and I wanna bring something up on screen because if you're interested in partnering, I've already put my email into chat. So if you have more comments, questions or thoughts for the mayor, you can send those my way. So feel free to do that. But um, if you want this information, you want to partner uh, with Compassionate USA, this is exactly the information that I will be sending you. So I'm not gonna read through it, but I do, whoops, did it just click off? No. Nope, okay, good. I can't see it for some reason, but um, hang in there. Give me one second. I'll just feel stronger about it if I redo this. There we go. But I do wanna look at this document at just the first part about why you would want to partner. Um, the mayor mentioned uh, about needing partners because this is how the word is going to get out in this campaign and curriculum of uh, compassion in the world. But uh, in this document, it, it shows that the mission of Compassionate USA, a people-centered campaign within a company of short course to promote compassion and community healing throughout the United States. And the reasons to do this, which he's given us many already today, but is to bring healing during these times and in our current context, to continue, grow, initiate a compassionate community, to involve a network of those across the entire United States, to learn from one another, to have resources be made available, to strengthen communication, compassion, and kindness, and to co-create a cultural shift. I was at a meeting earlier this afternoon on trauma-informed care, and it was very interesting on the panel how much they talked about we need a cultural shift, a major cultural shift. So I'm just gonna kind of scroll so that you would see the document that you would get from me, what the goals are. This is going to be launched in Columbus, Ohio at the US Conference of Mayors at the beginning of June. Compassionate USA is available. It's a gift from San Antonio to you at no cost. It will provide accessible and relevant concepts, foundational skills, common language, shared practices, It'll deepen our ethics. And in fact, that's how we went about the training here with our civic leaders is in terms of that ethic of reciprocity, uh, increase individual community capacity, uh, capacity and also resilience on a systemic level. Um, my colleagues in a minute are gonna talk about the components, about the focus areas, and then it will also then have even more information about partnering. So you would get that document from me if you are interested in becoming a partner and it will then describe it. But I also want to show it then because in the certificate that you would receive if you decide to partner, it defines the partnership. So um, our first city to become a partner in Compassionate USA was Houston, another Texas city. And in fact, I just got the seal today, the logo today from the city of Houston. So we're ready. But if you decide to partner, um, this is Compassionate USA's commitment to you that uh, Compassionate USA will place and honor your city's logo on the website. Um, we will communicate, Compassionate USA will communicate and give first release of all ongoing updates about Compassionate USA. And it will affirm and include your partnership in all of our communications with Compassionate USA. So if you wanna become a partner, what happens is that yes, send us your logo. That's your confirmation, affirmation that you wanna be a part of it. Once we get the logo on this end, it will be posted on the website, but then you will receive this certificate as, our, as Compassionate USA's confirmation of that partnership to you. And as the mayor mentioned earlier, that partnership on your end would be to affirm and endorse Compassionate USA, 
to communicate and promote intentionally, locally, through meetings, meetings, media, other creative methods. And then as a partner, you're the dissemination process to disseminate and then implement those materials intentionally and local. So all those networks that you can think of, educational institution, chambers, healthcare, police, fire departments. In fact, in this trauma-informed conversation this afternoon, our police department, which is 3,000 strong, is the very first police department in the United States to go through trauma-informed training. That is a compassion step in itself, and I'm very proud of that. Nonprofits, community groups, and faith-based organizations. And so this was sent to them. Their anniversary happened to be Valentine's Day, and so their certificate was dated that as well. So again, um, if you're interested and want more information, I will um, give me your, send me your email, send me an email. I'll put my email in chat again. But right now I wanna hand it over because you probably have questions about um, what is this actual campaign? What does it look like? What does it mean? I could probably take one quick question about partnering if there is one that's just waiting to be asked. Okay, if not, then I'm going to show you the trailer that you can find online at www.compassionateusa.org. And then I'm gonna hand it over to my colleagues, the uh, design team. Can you hear it? No. No, okay. I'm not sure why. I'm going to stop this again and I'm going to go back. That's why I paused it real quick because I didn't want to go all the way through it and you're watching it. Sorry about that. I think I've got it now. As we reflect on the well being of our cities, our nation, we must acknowledge the impact of all we have endured in recent years. The people we have lost, the injustices we encounter, the search for peace, unity, and solidarity. While it seems impossible to overcome today's challenges, there is power in our collective ability to transform our communities. Let us not rest until we know we have done everything we can to work toward compassion to bring our neighbors together, to learn how to heal. Compassionate USA is a six-part learning journey designed to teach self-compassion and community well-being that honors our common humanity and affirms the beauty of our differences. Join a people-centered campaign committed to creating compassionate cities. The journey starts with you. The journey continues with us. Compassionate USA. And so now I hand it over to the design team of Passionate USA. Were you able to hear that? Yes, we did. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Anne. We appreciate it. Good afternoon, everybody. It is wonderful to be in community with each of you across the country, across the world. Um, calling in, chiming in from Yanaguana, San Antonio. My name is Eric Castillo, and I am part of Compassionate USA with a bunch of really wonderful people. And so we are really excited to have this, uh, to be here today to talk with you more about this and to ideally to generate interest in, and partnership with Compassionate USA. Um, this really has become a, a really a creation of, of people who are on this call and other folks who are not on this call really wanting to develop something that's going to be a gift to the nation, a gift to the world, that's going to have significant impact. We believe firmly in this project, and so we want to give you just an overview of what's going to, what the components are for, for Compassionate USA, which includes curriculum, Coursera content, which will be optional free training, some toolkit information, some, and then a closeout conversation, some questions as well. So I'll pass this over to Dr. Julie Moore-Felix. Hello, thank you so much for having us today. We're really excited to share a little more information with you about this amazing project and this gift from the city of San Antonio. Uh, so 
there are several components to this project. I'll be talking a little bit about the curriculum side of it. Um, I have a PowerPoint here um, shared on the screen. I hope everyone can see it. Uh, we probably won't be going in the order that it's organized, but um, we'll skip around and, and each of us will take our turn kind of sharing a little bit about what we prepared for you today. So um, let me see if I can work this on Zoom. There we go. So just a quick overview. Um, there are several elements to this national campaign. Of course, you're, many of you are probably familiar with the website that's already in place and, and still a little bit under construction, but um, we have a website available. There will be six video components, a micro course and a toolkit. All of these will be the major elements of the campaign. I'll be talking a little bit more today about the micro course. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and skip over to that section for you and uh, discuss that. So one of the goals of this campaign uh, is to provide people with some education and training around skills related to compassion-centered living. So what we've done is we've designed a um, what we're calling a micro course. It's a six module course that focuses on six specific skills. And those include um, self-regulation and emotional awareness, gratitude and interdependence, self-compassion, compassion for others, compassion in systems, and collective trauma, collective healing. The format for the course is online, self-guided, is provided through Coursera, who's partnered with us. Many of you may have taken other trainings through Coursera. It's a really exciting platform, and we're, we're just so grateful for um, their partnership and what they've offered us in terms of providing this course for free to the public. Uh, another great benefit of the course is those who wish to complete the course and earn a credential will be presented with a digital badge from Credly. Uh, so if you're familiar with digital badges, it's a great way to showcase that you have um, attained some skills and knowledge in a particular area, in this case, compassion, uh, that you could add to your CV or to your social networking and professional um, identity and stuff like that. Uh, should take about 10 to 20 hours total to complete the course, and each module will feature uh, a variety of activities that will include some short videos, uh, some interactive learning objects, quizzes, and some reflective writing and reading. Um, and, and if we have time and you're interested, I can show you a sneak peek at, at one of the modules, but we'll, we'll move on in our presentation as we only have a few minutes, and then we'll see if we have some time for that in just a bit. Um, I guess let me hand over the microphone then to Neil Lewis and he can share some more information with you about what we've got prepared. Hi everybody, my name is Neil Lewis. I teach humanities and peace and conflict studies here at Northwest Vista and uh, here in San Antonio and I'm part of the Compassionate USA team. Um, the, can, we, can we go over to the slide with um, the toolkit? Sure can. Um, you know, the main thing, one of our main objectives of this whole project is accessibility to make sure that um, the entire project, whether that's the curriculum, the videos, is speaking to um, everyone in the United States. So we wanted to ensure that we're at a vocabulary, le vocabulary level that, that um, you know, eighth grade and up. Um, and that the other aspect is that we want it to be practical so that when we create things like the toolkit, that it's going to be things that are easy to do that are that are uh, applicable to everyone's community and that uh, are very practical in terms of hands-on, they don't require you to purchase anything um, and, and simple actions that people can do right away. Um, so the, the goal is, is that folks will uh, see these amazing videos, which we'll learn about just a, a little bit more, in a little few minutes, um, see the videos or complete the course and come back to the website to get some ideas on how to implement that in themselves. And that's not just, doing Compassion USA or getting um, their, uh, whether that's their in their cities, their municipalities or their uh, their uh, place of worship to get to do the Compassion USA curriculum, but also just again, acts that anyone could do uh, on their own. And I think I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Mig Dahlia Garcia. Mig, are you there? I'm here, thanks Neil. Hi everyone, it's so wonderful to be with you. 
today. And I'm really going to go over and give a big broad overview. So Julie, can you go to the first slide? Um, Y'all, I wanted to start with, um, I just told you my name. I'm with the San Antonio Peace Center, which migrated from um, long, deep roots in the community to join an institution of higher education. And what's important about that is that we are a community college, y'all. So the Peace Center lives at a community college and our goal and our role is to democratize education. So this is one way, this gift to the world is, is our, our investment to say, we, we said we want to do this and we are doing it um, in a very big way. And the way we're choosing to do it is through compassion. Um, I want to also just highlight some of what Anne said, that this truly is a collaboration. It's a collaboration with the city of San Antonio. You just heard the mayor and Anne. It's a collaboration with um, our sibling institutions in our district called the Alamo Colleges. And then, of course, the Peace Center. So it, it gives me great joy to be here um, and have such a wonderful, dedicated team that goes beyond the people here on this call. It is the people who help design it, the people who work on our courses to make them um, inviting and engaging. So thank you. Much gratitude to everyone. So uh, the campaign element. So we have a website and I was trying to put the website in our chat, but I was not successful. Um, so that's a place that you can access a lot of these resources. So take time to explore that. And we talked about having a course, Julie went over that. So that's for further, deeper, guided discussion and learning into compassion. Neil talked about accessibility. And one of the ways that we want this to be accessible is to do videos. So we have a series of six videos and on you can, as you can see, they are um, on the different topics of be self-aware. We decided that all our titles would be B titles. This is um, our, the essence of what it is we're trying to live and be compassionate. So um, the videos are a taste, they're the appetizer. It's to get people engaged and interested in going further. We also know that for some people that may be where they want to stay. They watch a video, they do a contemplative practice and they may not go on beyond that. So we have really, um, try to get experts that are compelling. Experts are people um, in the field that have a lot of experience in these areas. So they're local and they're national figures. So it, it gives us, um, we're really fortunate to have such great people to showcase compassion. So um, I think now, I think that's all I wanna go over at the time. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, at this time, so I want to open it up for questions. Do we have questions for any of the team, Eric, Julie, and Neil? Any questions about rollout? Any questions on collaboration, partnership? No questions, but just a deep thank you and a deep bow to all of you. Oh, this would be very huge. helpful as Compassionate USA evolves. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm not. I'm not sure uh, whether my small city here in South Carolina would be really interested in it. And I would like to know a no nonsense approach. I do have uh, two friends on the city council, so uh, maybe I can approach them. But do you have any ideas on? Uh, I mean, this would be very grassroots, starting with me. Right, so you know, how, how could we progress to where San Antonio is? I can respond to that. Great. One, uh, I believe, and Marilyn can respond to that as well. I'm fairly certain, in fact, that on the Charter for Compassion, there is a section that helps you do that to figure out what the steps are. So maybe Marilyn can put that into the uh, chat if you haven't explored the Charter's website. But I know in San Antonio, we started grassroots. And of all the efforts, I think that's, for me, it, it makes the most sense. So that the whoever is in office or whoever is no longer in office, the people in the community have already made the cultural shift. And so in San Antonio, we did that for about seven years before we took it to city council and had them um, sign the resolution to officially become 
a compassionate city as compassionate San Antonio. So, um, Bill, I, I'd love to talk to you more. And so feel free to email me and we, we can, I would love to do that. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. You're muted. Excuse me, is your email in the chat? Yeah, uh, but I'll do it again. Okay, thanks. And I appreciate your time, thank you. Looks like we have Carla May right on, next on the mic. I would just like to thank you also for this background and to request, Marilyn, could you please be sure and send us the chat also, because there's such valuable information in there. And we would have that as a resource for contacting, if not only the recording, but if the chat could be sent to us. Sure, we can do that. Thank you. Lisa. Hi, I put a couple of questions in the chat and it's basically if a city partners, can they do some and not all of the activities? Um, what is required and who kind of, if anything, monitors that about what a city does or not doesn't do? And the second question is, um, can individuals do this with or without a city, compassionate city mm -hmm. endorsement? Absolutely. Wonderful questions, Lisa. Thank you for them. And I'll start and then I'll pass it on to my colleagues. So th this is an invitation for anyone. Compassionate USA is an opportunity for anybody, any organization uh, to, to participate, to learn, to grow their skills and understanding and their practice and awareness of compassion. So it's it's built, the, the Compassion USA campaign and the, the learning content is built as a learning journey with the ex, with the, the hope that people will continue to learn through our website and through our resources and through our Coursera content. So there's several, there's certain components that are individualized learning, such as our Coursera content, which is individualized learning. The, the videos are also individualized and the contemplative practices are also. Um, there's, there's opportunities for organizations, nonprofits, for profits, uh, municipal and uh, organizations to also step in and be official partners for this. Um, grassroots is a very powerful way of creating change and we, we honor that and we built this uh, to, to recognize and honor that. And I'll pass it to my colleagues who may wanna offer more. I think that was beautiful, Eric. I, I did want to say, you know, we we built it in such a way that if you wanted to watch one video and then you stopped, you can do that. So really, that's the that's the accessibility piece. That's the, the democratization piece. That take what you know you need for your spirit and for your community. But an individual cannot quote partner. You wouldn't have a bunch of individual names as partners or not. I mean, that's just a question. So you're our partner in spirit, if not on our website. So you, you know, it would be that you are partnering as part of this campaign. You wouldn't have a logo or anything on the website, but you know, we we know that there will be people from other places. And again, if somebody else wants to add to that, um, there'll be people from other places that take it as individuals. Great. Thank you so much for the answers. Sure. This is wonderful. Thanks, Lisa. Nancy, um, I see you you have your hand up. But Nancy, you're, muted. you're muted. You're muted, Nancy. Sorry, thank you. Thank you so much, Marilyn and San Antonio team, everybody who's doing this great work. I'm wondering if there exists a, a baseline so that we'll be able to measure our success. Is there um, anything in place um, for us to use so that we can get started and watch our, our, our progress? And I'm gonna look, I see, Julie, did you want to take it? I see you reading. Well, I, I just, for a point of clarification, Nancy, do you mean your progress in terms of your individual learning as you go through the content? Or are you talking about in terms of partnerships with the entire project and like key performance indicators kind of thing? Key performance indicators as a city who mm -hmm. is um, engaged with this initiative from the beginning. It would be nice to be able to demonstrate um, how we grow through this initiative. 
I agree. We've had some discussion around how we might formulate some key performance indicators, and, uh, and I'll invite my colleagues to, to add in. Um, my, my initial ideas are that uh, we would, A, want, want cities, um, partnering cities to kind of keep track of the number of folks that are completing the course and the credential, so that there would be some measurement of that. And, and I'm open to, you know, more conversations around what are some other key performance indicators that cities and and or organizations might be tracking and looking at. And that might be um, some survey instruments to, to, to kind of see where people are starting off in terms of their sensibilities around the, these skills or or their their quality of, uh, I, wanna, I don't wanna say their quality of life, but the extent to which these, these qualities are present in their awareness and then where they, they might be ending up. And there may be some other areas for um, organizations and cities to do some, some interesting um, growth measurement. And I, I wonder if someone else from the team might want to speak to that. Well, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention briefly that, so we, we have developed some key performance indicators for the campaign itself in terms of click rates, viewing of, of the videos, monitoring that and the amount of intake we receive for not only for partners, but just for people who sign on to get information about this. For partners, so that we think that, I believe the one effective way would be through the partnership mechanism. So let's say, for example, the city of Houston signs on as a partner, and then they commit to having X number of their employees go through the Coursera content, then we could work on giving information to, because we were able to see where people stop out in the learning process. So mm -hmm. if they complete and earn the badge, and we can report that out to our partners. Um, this is why it's key to have the, the official partnership and also to have an official partner contact. And we can help give that information on a routine basis for that. And if we are seeing some, some lag from our partners and we can take a look to see where exactly the stop out is as well. I think Thanks that's so Carla. I think Carla May, I know that St. Louis, Compassionate St. Louis is uh, taking a real close look at this. We have a number of other cities, Louisville that uh, has created a profile uh, and a few other cities that are working with the city index. So Carla May, do you wanna share what St. Louis is doing? Sure. Um, what I can just share with you, you can look on, uh, there's two websites. They are both pre-COVID, so they are dated to some extent. One is called um, uh, realtors.com, realtors.com. The other is Forbes Business Journal. If you go to those two websites, for realtors.com and Forbes Business Journal, they have nine qualities by which they measure a city that is really a compassionate city. Nine areas of measurement. You can find this, and I would encourage anybody who has contact with that website to ask them to update it because it's pre-COVID and we need to keep that in front of people's eyes. And if the realtors of the United States that are going to tell people, why are the places you would want to live, they need to, they need to get that out there so that the rest of us can use their nine qualities and the same with the Forbes Business Journal. This would be very helpful. So they need to be encouraged to, uh, to, really, to really get, um, to get that updated so that we have a measurement that we know could be used for uh, for our uh, for our our own progress in this effort. Great, thanks, Carla May. Um, I just looked at the time, and uh, we are now a few minutes over. And so I just want to thank everyone uh, who's here. Uh, it's an extraordinary number for one of our chats, and um, a lot more people, in fact, 50% more signed up. So we will be sending out the recording and the chat uh, to everyone who did sign up and who were here. I know a number of you came a little late, so you missed the upfront uh, talk with Ron uh, and the presentation of events. So please do take a look at this. Invite others uh, to uh, participate in Compassionate USA. Remember, uh, it's up to us actually uh, to get this 
running and off the ground. So we're excited to help in any way we can. And if you have questions, please uh, utilize contacting Anne or even us at here at the Charter for Compassion. So thank you so much. And we'll see you in about another month for another chat. Take I care. want to go ahead. I know everybody's going to leave, but anybody who wants to hear who the partners are. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I, I meant to do that when I talked, but we have seven official partners that we have them all completely logos and everything done, right? International Charter for Compassion, uh, Compassionate Houston, Compassionate Australia. Um, the University of the Incarnate Word is a local partner. And so we're building a local partnering model so that to encourage others to do likewise. Um, Citizen Discourse is a national partner. Uh, Pro Social World is an international partner. And Age Nation is the seventh one uh, international partner. We have about 36 others who are in process. Uh, they haven't said yes, some have, some haven't, but um, the top 15 very active compassionate cities are in that process, Texas cities, some cities in California. So we've got about 36 who are in process. We're working on another list of about 280. So let me know. Absolutely. That's amazing. I know. And, and as I look at what's in front of me here, I think there's Compassionate West Hollywood, uh, there's Austin, uh, Las Vegas, um, and uh, Seattle. So, um, you know, there's incredible potential here. We need people to volunteer to help uh, because we need point people. We need, uh, Carla May, we need you in uh, St. Louis so that you can get surrounding cities alerted to this. Uh, Nancy, we know that you've already volunteered or maybe you're not clear after uh, what you've just experienced today uh, to be the point person for Florida. So we're looking for point people who would be willing uh, to contact not only their compassionate initiative, their compassionate city, but their partners as well as surrounding uh, locations. So. Again, thank you. Uh, and any questions, send them our way. Thank you for coming. Bye. Bye.